coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. You're as equal. You can say anything that you want to say. But the question is, who's the enforcer? You go to your husband and say, honey, I don't agree with that. I, I think that's wrong. I, I don't think we ought to be doing that. And your husband says, ah, and he does it anyway. Get in your prayer closet and ask God to get him. You know, just, I'm, that's what my wife does. She has a relationship with Jesus. Let me say, if you're telling the truth, God is on your side and he can change your husband and it won't drive your husband away from you. Four needs of a man and how to meet him. Number one need of a man is honor and respect. This is our mega need. Women have a mega need and men have a mega need. This is our mega need. And when the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 22, wives submit your husbands as to the Lord. In verse 33, it says you respect your husband. Men and women are totally equals. The verse before that says submit to one another in the fear of Christ. So I don't believe in a, in a concept of submission. Women should, should submit because they're not as equal or you know, something like that. Men and women are completely equals. What, what is being tried to, uh, what Paul is saying here is respect your husband like you would the Lord. Not the way your mother did your father. Not the way you see on television. Not the way your friends do their husbands. How would you respond to Jesus Christ? If you were in a, if you were in a relationship with Jesus and you were responding to him, that's the standard the Bible gives for women because men have a need for respect and honor. It's our biggest need is men gravitate to the place where they get honor and respect and they run from any place where we feel like I may be disrespected. And again, it goes back to this, this issue of the way that women talk to their husbands is you say anything you want to say. It's just the how issue. And I want to talk about how to give your husband honor, just the practical aspect of if you ought to do it, then how do you do it? Well, the first is allow him to fail. How do I honor my husband? Let your husband fail. I'm not talking about self-destructive behavior. I'm not saying that your husband is in some kind of a, a destructive behavior and you just stand back and let him fail. But I'm just saying your husband's imperfect and he's going to fail. Don't scream when I say that. You know, the, don't want you to be too shocked. Your husband's imperfect and he's going to fail. A lot of the damage that women do in their marriages is, is trying to keep their husband from making a mistake. Okay. I, I love Joyce Meyer's story. One day, her and her husband Dave were in the car driving. She's telling this story in one of her teachings. And they were in the car driving. You know how it is when you're driving. You know, it's just... Uh... <laughs> and I, I've got the most emotive wife in the world when she, she has a name for everybody on the road and she talks to everybody on the road. And she screams and grabs the dash and all those kind of things. And we, we've learned to live with it. You know, it's just one of those things. But um, Joyce Meyer was right, driving down the street with, uh, with Dave one day and she was telling him, you know, turn here, stop, go, all the things that, you know, wives do. Their husband. So Dave was mad. Uh, he, was, he was mad. She was frustrated. And they were at a stop sign. And the Lord said to her, they were sitting there, and, you know, he was mad. She was frustrated. And she was telling him all the And the Lord said to her, why can't you shut up? <laughs> I'm going to milk that for just a minute longer. I... In other words, just let him go his own way. Let him make a wrong turn. Let him get lost. And by the way, men don't get lost. We're just, we're just, it's an adventure. And we don't need some stinking person telling us what to do. And, but let him make a mistake. Let him, you don't have to correct him for everything. That's not your role is to correct your husband for everything. Just let him make a mistake. And you, you support him. And in other words, I'm not talking about self-destructive behavior. The second thing is confront your husband, but let God be the enforcer. You're as equal. You can say anything that you want to say. But the question is, who's the enforcer? You go to your husband and say, honey, I don't agree with that. I, I think that's wrong. I, I don't think we ought to be doing that. And your husband says, ah, and he does it anyway. Get in your prayer closet and ask God to get him. You know, just, <laughs> I'm, that's what my wife does. She has a relationship with Jesus. Let me say, if you're telling the truth, God is on your side and he can change your husband and it won't drive your husband away from you. Okay? If you're wrong, he would correct you. There's not much of a chance that you're wrong. <laughs> but there's a chance. There's a chance. So you tell your husband, honey, this, 
I'm not the enforcer. The Holy Spirit is the enforcer. And men need to do the same thing. Otherwise, you do nag, and you get into a fear mode, not a faith mode. 1 Peter 3 talks about women can change their husbands without a word as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. And it says that a gentle and quiet spirit is precious in God's sight. And listen, gentle and quiet is not a mousy little beaten down woman, because I know some of you have very strong personalities, and you're offended by that, and I don't blame you, okay? Gentle and quiet is the opposite of rough and loud. And the reason that you become aggressive is because of fear, typically. Something, my husband's going to make a mistake, and I've got to stop him. No, you need to say what you need to say, and you need to trust God to change your husband. Again, if it's destructive behavior, call somebody in. I'm not saying stand back and watch your husband self-destruct. The next thing is honor him where you want him to be, not where he is. Honor him. This is what Karen did for me. Proverbs 31 talks about the excellent wife, and it says her husband is an elder in the gates of the city. It attributes it to her, not him. Her husband is an elder in the gates of the city because of her. In other words, her husband probably wasn't acting like an elder in the gates of the city, but she treated him as though he were an elder in the gates of the city, and he became according to her, her level of honor. Listen, men become in an atmosphere of honor. Men will do anything for honor. We're crazy for honor. And so when a wife is honoring her husband beyond where he is, undeserved honor, in, in, in other words, speaking destiny into your husband, beyond what he's doing right now, what do you see in your husband? What did you see in him when you were dating him? And you honor him at that level. He, he rises to that level of honor. And the number four is cover his faults and focus on his strengths. The devil, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And he's always accusing, constantly accusing. And what the devil wants us to do is constantly think about the worst qualities in our spouse. What God wants to do is const us to constantly think about the best qualities in our spouse. This is men and women, both. And when the, when the devil has had our, his way, our minds become negative in fault finding, and all we do is see the wrong thing. You know, on any given day, you can wake up and write down all the bad things about your life, but on any given day, the good things about our lives far outweigh the bad things. But we have a tendency to take the good things for granted and focus on the bad things. That's why praise is such a critical discipline. Remind yourself every day about the good things that your husband does, and, and if, as you begin to remember that, you'll realize that's a lot. The second need that men have is sex. And so it, men are typically, 20% of women are more sexual than their husbands, but most men are more sexual than their wives. And so the way that you meet your husband's need for sex is, first of all, you communicate to your husband that you accept his need and that you're committed to meeting it. I accept, I accept this need. And again, I want to say, when I did pre-marriage counseling for a long time, getting people, you know, couples ready to be married, and regardless of how much I told the young brides, about their husband's need for sex, you know, typically six months into the marriage, they're convinced they married a pervert, you know, and all, <laughs> all, all he thinks about is sex. And, and typically what, what women do is, or typically is they sometimes try to shame their husbands out of it. Like, again? <laughs> it's impossible. It, it's, you're, this isn't healthy. Again. And lectures and brow beating, and it's like, <sighs> like, is... I, I accept the fact that you're more sexual than me. And that's really the way that it is. God gave your husband that need to keep drawing him back to you. Understand that men are visual and physical much more than women. Now, women aren't blind related to sex, but men, men are visually stimulated. They want to see their wives naked, um, which means either naked or lingerie and not flannel and <laughs> not canvas, not... Uh, I did a, a seminar one time in Baltimore, and I, made, I didn't know there was a stand-up comedian in the audience, and I said, uh, ladies, there's a place for flannel nightgowns, and this guy yelled out, the fireplace. <laughs> and that's the way we, so men don't need non-sexual touching. We want sexual touching, and, and we, want, we want to see our wives' bodies, and many women don't feel good about their bodies, and this, this is just no man should ever compare his wife's body to any other woman. I married the most beautiful woman on the earth, period. When she's 99 years old, she will be the most beautiful woman on the earth, period. And I will never compare her to another woman, period. I will not compare my wife's body 
to anyone who has not paid the price to bear my children. And so, you shouldn't look at other women. You shouldn't compare your wife to any other woman. And so, but many women compare themselves, and they don't feel good about themselves, but need to understand your husband has that need. Another way that you meet your husband's need for sex is be more sexual than you feel. So let me rewind here for just a minute. Doesn't matter how you feel. You be sexual. You, let me talk about, let me talk for just a minute about matching libidos, matching libidos, okay? Having the same sex, because some people think, well, you know, sex, you have sex in marriage when you both feel like it. <laughs> You'll have sex about eight times. And <laughs> most sex in marriage is meeting a need in your spouse that you don't have. And if your wife is more sexual than you, you do that for her. You meet your, you meet your spouse's needs. Otherwise, you, you just uh, you know, leave them to their needs being unmet, which is, which is a very bad thing. Be more sexual than you feel. And be energetic and creative in meeting your husband's need. Very important. Fun and friendship is another need that men have. We want to be, fun. We want to be friends with our wives. I, I want Karen to be my friend. I don't want to be mother. Is I, I, want, I want Karen to be my buddy. Men want their wives to be their best friends. And that means come out of your world into his world. And don't lose your identity in mothering. You, I'm sure you're a terrific mother. But don't become matronly. And don't lose your identity in being a mother and forget that you're also his buddy. You need to come into his world. I love a story that a pastor told about a couple in his church and their marriage was on the really, really in a bad state. And this woman, this woman went hunting with her husband one day. She, she knew that he loved to deer hunt. And she said, honey, I, I want to go deer hunting with you. And um, of course he was a little worried because he thought maybe she wanted to get him alone with a firearm. And, uh, <laughs> but what she did she came out of her world into his world and healed her marriage. They went on a hunting trip. Let me say something. Your husband will never be as open with you as when he's having fun with you. You'll be sitting somewhere having fun, and all of a sudden you'll find your husband just opens up because that's the way we're wired. When you're my friend, I'll open my heart to you. Until you're my friend, I don't know because that's one of the most important needs I have. You come into my world, and you be my buddy. That's what I need from you. Number four is su support at home. Now listen, men should do their equal share at home. Is that um, I, it, men, housework, when you get home, your job just started, it didn't end. Uh, at home, I, I vacuum, I take out the trash, I fold clothes, I, I do laundry. I don't cook for health and safety reasons. Uh, it's just better if I don't. But Karen does not pick up after me. I mean, she does sometimes, but I pick up after myself. I don't put those burdens on Karen. And, uh, but here's what I need from Karen. Women have the gift of nesting and turning a house into a home. I had a uh, uh, couple one time, and he was an interior decorator. And, uh, and she, he would come home, and she had nested. You know, she had the home, and he would redo it. And they, they were in for counseling. She was mad. Oh, she was mad. And she said, now, I like to do my house. And when he comes home, he redoes it. And he said, but it's technically incorrect. And I said, you're technically about to get killed. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed that teaching. That is a, a really important teaching about marriage. You know, that comes from my full seminar called Marriage on the Rock. It is a 10-part seminar. We want to get it to you. Uh, along with the book. But first of all, for your gift of any amount right now, to support the mission and the ministry of marriage today, we go all over the world helping people succeed in marriage, helping marriages to stay together and solve problems, and helping little children to stay together with their parents. It's one of the most important things that we do as a ministry. When you support us here at Marriage Today, we're going to bless you. We're going to send you for your gift of any amount this teaching called The Most Important Issue in Marriage, and it is. It's the most important teaching you will ever hear when you send a gift of any amount here to support the ministry and mission of marriage today, which is so critical in the day that we live in. For your gift of $50 or more, we'll send you the, four, the full 10-part audio series of uh, Marriage on the Rock. It's a full CD series along with a book, Marriage on the Rock. But for your gift of $110, we'll send you the DVD series full 10-part DVD series, part of what you saw today, but the full series along with the Marriage on the Rock book and as a bonus, Happy, Happy Love. That's our romance book. 
That gives you date night tips and just how to keep the love alive in your marriage every single day. We want to get these important resources into your hands, and here's how you can get them. Marriage on the Rock, the best-selling book and series, is the essential resource to having the marriage of your dreams. Through this power-packed series, marriage expert Jimmy Evans will show you how to deal with real-life challenges and offer easy-to-understand solutions that will transform your relationship. Jimmy will address all the major issues a couple will encounter, like communication, finances, sex, kids, his and her needs, blended families, and much more. For your gift of any amount, you'll receive the CD single, The Most Important Issue in Marriage. For your gift of $50 or more, we'll send you the Marriage on the Rock book and CD series. For your gift of $110 or more, you'll receive the book and DVD series, plus the Passion Reigniting Happy Happy Love Book. Discover God's design for your dream marriage. Whether you've been married for years or just preparing for the journey, experience Marriage on the Rock today. We're talking on this program about how to understand and meet your husband's needs. Now, I want to say we have another program coming up on how a husband can understand his wife's needs because I don't want all the ladies to get mad. So this is just one program among many. But, you know, that we have different needs, and that's the point, Karen, Mm -hmm. is that men and women are different. And part of the problem when we got married, of course, we didn't know anything about marriage, but I thought you were weird. I thought, I love her, she's attractive, I'm glad we got married, but how long is it going to take to get her to be normal? Because I'm normal, and if she was just like me, she'd be normal. Now, uh, 39 years later, what we know is that men have needs, Mm -hmm. and women have needs. We have some needs in common, but really we're very, very different. Mm -hmm. Okay, So men need honor. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's the number one need that men have. Not saying that women don't need honor, but this is our mega need. For a man, Mm -hmm. everything we hear, everything we do is filtered through this need we have of honor and esteem. And really, that's why Ephesians 5 says that women should respect their husbands as they do the Lord. Men and women are totally equals. It's just, it's giving a woman the key to her husband's Mm -hmm. heart. Sex, friendship, domestic support, all those kinds of things like that. So you have done a a great job through the years, really, (laughs) Karen, in meeting my needs. Now, I mean, you have your issues, but, you know, I was always the worst. (laughs) And you yeah. had your issues. Thank you. You're, you're perfect today. But I was the worst one in our marriage. I really was. But, but you know, when we got married, you didn't understand me the way you do today. Right. Okay. But today we have a great marriage because we work at it and we're committed to meeting the unique needs, the inherent needs that we have in each other. That's right. Well, you know, we have, actually have a question that you'll Good. love answering. How do I honor my husband when he is always messing things up? I don't want him to feel like he is getting away with everything. Well, this Stacy from from Texas. Well, Stacy, I want to answer this, and I know that there are many other women that feel that way. Karen uh, married a jerk, you know, and she loved me, but I was I was concerning marriage. I was just an idiot. And um, any woman can honor a good man, a perfect man. Anyone can. I mean, I just, he's a good man. He doesn't make any mistakes, so it's honoring. The challenge is, how do you honor a man who's making mistakes? First Peter 3, uh, it tells women to honor their husbands. And it says to have a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. And it says you, you can change your husband without a word as he observes your chaste and respectful behavior. Let me say this. A gentle and quiet spirit is not a mousy, beaten down woman. Because I know you have a strong personality and that's the way God made you. And that's great. And you're your husband's equal. Okay. A gentle and quiet spirit is a woman who trusts in God. So the issue is, I don't have to change you. I don't have to beat you down. And, and in fact, this question from Stacy, she kind of feels like maybe she's on a mission from God to keep him humble. You know, she says, because, you know, if I, if, if I honor him, he'll just keep messing up. So I've got to kind of, you know, cut him down or beat him down or whatever Mm -hmm. because he's messing up. But here's my issue. No, you don't. You can honor your husband. I'm not talking about destructive behavior. If he's beating you, if he's ruining the family, if if, if something like that, you've got to do everything you can to stand up against it. I'm not talking about that. But I'm just saying every husband makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. 
And this is what this woman did. Okay. So, I, so I can answer it from this perspective. And I want you to answer it also, Karen. But, but here's the thing. Trust God. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be the enforcer. Tell your husband you love him. Tell your husband what's wrong. And just say, honey, you know, I wish you would empty the rifle before you clean it. You know, mm-hmm. it, it may be doing something real dumb like mm-hmm. that. And, uh, and then pray. Mm-hmm. And love him anyway and trust God. And if you can't love your husband anyway, it means you're the enforcer. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit's not the enforcer. And one of the things that changed me was Karen loved me. She told me what I was doing wrong, but you loved me and you prayed for me. Mm-hmm. And what it did was is it let me know, A, I didn't deserve a woman that good. Mm-hmm. And B, God began to work on my heart. And that's how I changed. Well, and I think that sometimes a woman with that personality, she, she just wants to be validated, that what she's saying is being heard. And but at the same time, you know, what she doesn't realize she's doing when she's treating him that way is he's losing more and more respect for her. So it doesn't exactly. matter what she says, she's not going to respect it. Right. And so, you know, she's losing in both ways. What, she's not going to be heard, you know, and then, she, then he's going to lose respect to even want to hear any, anything she has to say. And so she really would be doing herself as well as her marriage a favor, you know, if she would back off, you know, and just trust, yeah. like you're saying, trust God is huge. And that's the way I did it. You know, I didn't uh, understand all that. I was only 19. And I was practicing those things then because I thought, okay, if God says this, you know, then maybe I, that's what I should be doing. And we've lost that, um, just that going back to the, what the Word of God says and just applying it because we're so bombarded by what the world says to do and how we're supposed to treat men or women that we forget that God really does have a special way that we treat each other. You bet. And it works, you know, and it's so important to apply that into our lives. Well, Stacy, that's an honest question, and mm-hmm. I don't want you to feel like I'm, you know, pushing back at you, but, but I am saying that it's just true. Mm-hmm. Your husband is going to make mistakes. He does make mistakes, but the key to his heart is respect. Mm-hmm. And you have needs also, and so we do other programs on that. But I'm saying, honor your husband, tell him how you feel respectfully, and get in your prayer closet, and you say, God, you changed my husband. If I'm wrong, change me, but change my husband. It's a win-win deal. You've done what you should do, and now you're depending on God, and he's big enough to change your husband. Okay? We hope that that helps because we're talking about how to understand your husband's needs. And again, we do both sides of this, talking about men and women because we're just simply different. So you know, maybe you're in a situation right now where you're frustrated um, at your spouse and you feel like they're not meeting your needs, meet theirs. I'm saying you don't. if you try to fight fire with fire, you're going to get a bigger fire. But if you fight fire with water, you're going to put out the fire. You can only defeat a spirit with the opposite spirit. Maybe your spouse is being selfish. You can be selfless. Maybe your spouse is ignoring you. You can pay attention to them. You're not a victim. When you begin to do the right thing, and you begin to trust God, everything changes. So if you're a wife and you're hearing about your husband's needs, just begin to apply yourself and trust God. And I promise you it'll make a big difference. You know, this, this program goes across America and around the world to help people succeed in marriage. Uh, if they're failing, if they're struggling, and I know some of you watching today, you're struggling. We love to give people the resources they need to succeed in marriage, in family relationships, but we can only do it with people who stand with us financially We have a very special group of people who give to us every month, and they're called our Rock Solid Partners. And for their monthly support, they get a special resource. Karen and I are asking you to stand with us to become a Rock Solid Partner, and here's how you can do it. Marriage. Family. This is the foundation of our society. But this foundation is under attack. Across the country and across the street, marriages are crumbling. Young men and women are questioning the value and purpose of marriage, and children are suffering the heartache of divorce. But regardless of how dark, how difficult it may seem, with the right teaching, the right training, the right commitment, every marriage has a 100% chance of success. Join us by becoming a rock-solid partner today. Together, we can help shape the future of marriage around the world. For $14, $28, or $56 per month, you can get the tools you need to succeed in marriage, including online access to the Dream Marriage Library, CD and DVD lessons shipped to your door, and exclusive partner perks. Become a Rock Solid Partner today. Welcome back. 
Jimmy, I have a great question for you. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, my wife cleans houses for a living, but she doesn't clean ours. We get along fine as long as I don't mention that. What do I do? Well, this is Brad from North Carolina. Now, you know, men have, one of our needs is domestic support. And that means that we want our wives to turn the house into a home. Now, the, the thing about this question, and I really sympathize for this woman, and I understand this is an important need for the man, but she cleans houses for a living. Mm -hmm. okay? And then she comes home and says that she doesn't clean theirs. Well, she ought to. I mean, but when a man gets home from work, he still is just as responsible for the home as she is. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this, I don't cook for health and safety reasons, okay? Uh, but I fold clothes, I make beds, I pick up around the house, I help you, I do dishes and things like that. Because when I'm at home, I don't consider myself, to, well, I, you know, I'm home and I'm not working and you should wait on me. Mm -hmm. When I'm at home, I think I'm here to help her. Now, she takes responsibility. You're domestically centered. Oh, yeah, okay. Absolutely this wife should be domestically centered. And so she's making a statement to him that says, I'm gonna take care of everybody else's house, but when I get home, I'm off. And I'm not gonna take care of our house. She's wrong, okay? But Brad, also, I would say to you, you need to let your wife know she has a partner and that you're just as committed to the well-being of the home as she is. Karen, when we got married, she worked uh, in a bank. Mm -hmm. And many times she didn't get home till very late. I cleaned the house. I, I got the house ready for when she came home. It's kind of like if you're a, a masseuse or a dentist and you came home and your wife wanted you to keep doing the, the teeth or yeah. the massages the rest of the day. It's like, I can understand when she comes home. Yeah. It's like, I have cleaned the house all the time. So you're right, though. I mean, yeah. it's the partners, the sharing. It's the, you know, being sensitive to what they've gone through that day and, and sharing the load. And I, I think that being romantic, Brad, uh, is helping her with the house is big-time romance and big-time points. I can just tell you that right now. That's the only reason I do it personally <laughs> is because of all the massive points. And you points. know what? It's true. I'll be, we'll be gone on a trip, and, and he'll be home before I will. And so I come in, and, I'm, you know, he's, he's so good about this. It's like I'll come in, and the house is perfect. And I'm like, oh, it's so, like, romantic. <laughs> well, it's something that a, that a man can do for his wife that shows his support to her. She should obviously show more interest in the house. But Brad, I'm encouraging you, you do the right thing first. Is if it's something that's that important to you, you do it for her and let her know how much you appreciate her working outside the home and her hard work. Okay, we're out of time. Sorry. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you next time. Right here on Marriage Today. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series Marriage on the Rock. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Looking for your next great book? Start reading instantly with Marriage Today's eBooks now available online. And don't forget, become a rock solid partner and receive the Dream Marriage Library. There's a rock solid partner level to fit every need. This program is made possible by the generous support of our faithful partners.